Welcome to another Issues and Answers program. And today we are here with three guests who I will introduce in a, in a very short while. We are going to be discussing a serious matter that affects not only St. Lucia, but I guess the region and perhaps the entire universe. We want to look at mm, issues about males responsibilities and all that goes with it and without any further ado let me just just go straight to my guests and let me introduce my guests first and foremost the one sitting nearest to me mr ajani lebon welcome sir we also have mr lampius i gotta be careful about that one you lampius frederick and uh, mr modestus louis they are from, I guess, representing different sectors, different agencies, whatever. So, I guess what? I will ask them very quickly to introduce themselves. I, they, they know themselves better than I do. So, let's do that quickly and let's, we will get into the discussion right away. Mr. Lebon? All right, thank you very much. Uh, so, Johnny Lebon, current interim chairperson of the Senate National Youth Council, which is the representative group and body and voice for young people across the island. Okay, my name is Yulam Pierce Frederick. I am the Policy and Program Officer in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment. I am Modestus Louis and I represent the Do Nation Foundation. Do Nation Foundation is a voluntary organization and we started this program called Father's Rise, which I will tell you about a little more about as we go along okay good so we, we will t be talking a lot about the do nation foundation i've heard about it but i guess today we will be we will learn a lot more about do nation foundation but let's start with mr frederick um representing the ministry of equity what is the role of the of the ministry in this um dispensation here what what are you all about with with that um that, that men's, men's um, issues that you want to, to, to put forward. Thank you, Mr. Gasper. Well, the Ministry of Equity has a mandate to deal with families, to deal with the social welfare, the social well-being of our nation. And our Honorable Minister, the Honorable Joachim Henry, noted the uptick in crime and violence, especially among our nation's youth. And predominantly, we note that it is the young males that are victims of, of this current um, situation. So even way back in March of this year, Minister Henry convened a meeting with faith-based organizations, trying to glean from them ideas as to how we can implement some crime mitigation strategies. And in his quest, you know, he chanced upon this non-governmental organization do Nation Foundation. That is already the brainchild of a program which I'm sure my co-guest will um, expound on. The brainchild of a, a program that is reaching out to men in St. Lucia. So he invited the heads of the Department at Ministry of Equity to throw out the idea that we have some collaboration with that NGO so that we would host a national men's convocation that forum would allow men to express what are the issues they are facing, hear all sides, give them a platform to have those meaningful conversations, and also hear from them what are their recommendations, what are their suggestions to resolve those issues. So basically the Ministry of Equity is giving Donation Do Foundation that enabling environment Mm. to implement that um, convocation, which we have slated for the 27th of November. Um, we were looking at the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds as the venue for it. And it's going to be a full day of activities, fun-filled. We're trying to promote it as a day for family and a family affair, not just men. You can bring the madam. You can bring even your children. We want to cater to everyone so that it will be a family day and you can come out and participate in all of the activities set for that day. Good, so that takes us to Donation Foundation. 
he, 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 I didn't. He put, he put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Do Nation Foundation is, as Mr. Frederick mentioned, an NGO. It is the brainchild of Mrs. Diane Felicier. And while I could go through the, all the measures, basically we're looking to tackle the social ills within the society. We've recognized that no government, even with all the resources, would be able to tackle all the social ills, much less us. That's a fact. It, yeah, it is yes. a fact. We've recognized that. Yes. And so <clears throat> we've decided that instead of cursing the darkness, we would light a candle. And so we started out. Now, last year, 2021, for Father's Day, we started this Father's Rise initiative. Because it's been recognized that the absence of fathers in the homes are a big contributor to a lot of the issues that we're seeing and experiencing. So this is where this is coming from. There's a lot more, but then that's just a teaser <laughs> for you for now. <clears throat> just a teaser. Okay. Yes. Um, so Mr. LeBron, I'm, I don't know if everything you've heard already puts you on the spot now, that because as a young male, growing up you probably feeling you are feeling the brunt of it right the social ills that we spoke of you are the president of the national youth council what is the contribution of the national youth council to this initiative right thank you so similarly to mr louis the national youth council certainly has a responsibility to basically light that candle and to contribute towards alleviating many of the social issues, the challenges that young people face across the island. Uh, we recognize, of course, it, it is not possible for the state to be able to roll out interventions to solve the many issues that young people face. And of course, young people who go through those challenges have a knowledge of these experiences and are able to then come to the fore to be able to discuss and to bring forward solutions to many of those challenges that we face. So we recognize that systematically, young people in many ways are marginalized and in many ways if you are to uh, look at the various ways in in which youth are not given the best life chances you realize that young men whether it is through the educational sector whether it is through the employment the job sector whether it is through the social um, spaces within communities young men are placed in very difficult situations to make very difficult decisions and perhaps we are not preparing them sufficiently to deal with many of the challenges that they face. So we understand that there is a responsibility that we must, uh, that we have to educate young people sufficiently, young men, but also to be very sensitive to the challenges that young men face, specifically within the family environment. Because the home, uh, we, we, we believe that the home environment, the, the dynamics, the power dynamics within the home, within the communities, uh, leads to many of the difficulties that young men are posed with and we must not be uh, prescriptive as it pertains to the the solutions that are brought forward uh, to deal with those issues but we must provide as um, the previous guest was saying that we should provide the platform for the young men to speak to those issues and of course we use these opportunities to build <coughs> strong relationships with our young men to which they feel empowered to then uh, act on behalf of themselves and their peers within the various spaces. So it's more about creating the platform. And as a, a, a youth organization, we must always uh, be open to understanding the experiences of young men across various backgrounds. Because the young man within the rural community has different experiences to the young man within an urban setting. And these are some of the peculiarities we have to be mindful of. I was, I was just about um, I'm picking you on this one, this, the, the, the different experiences. Because he, he, Mr. Frederick mentioned the, the initiative about <clears throat> the, the 
father's rights. The father's rights. Yeah. How does that include, see, the, the young men in the ghetto? But I don't like the word ghetto, sorry. Right. But the, 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 the marginalized and the disadvantaged men, um, those who commit the crimes, how do we embrace them? Right. Well, one of the things I think Donation really came forward with is, is that the program must be a dynamic program, a program that has key features that are attractive and appeal to young men across various spaces. For example, um, I believe we've had discussions on you know informal settings, whether it be uh, the playing of dominoes or having a car show or, or bringing entertainers, comedians, individuals or settings that the young man within a rural setting or the young man who um, has different preferences or unconventional preferences may um, yeah. um, move towards. So I think for us, it's less about the structured discussions and the dialogue, whereas the dialogue is important to distill the information, but it must be a safe space that we're creating, that the young man who sees this flyer or hears this over the radio hears at least one thing in that that he is interested or would like to know more about. And of course, he comes into the space and we use this as the opportunity to then build a relationship to which the young man knows that it's not just him going through it, but there are men across the island who share those challenges and are able to then you know, determine, well, how can we work together to address those? And I, <clears throat> and I imagine it's not only about young men. Nowadays, the mm -hmm. young women are also troublesome and giving some, some, some difficulties. Um, are you thinking about that, Mr. Frederick? Well, that did come up in our um, planning committee discussions that the issues facing men do have some aspects pertaining to women in society as well. And that is the reason why the Ministry of Equity has partnered with a number of different agencies, and that includes the Division of Gender Affairs. They are also part of our planning committee. We have the Ministry of Youth and Sports. And our initiative is not just only to hear the issues, but really important takeaways. How can we address it? Because it's one thing to just have a talk shop and to be discussing over and over the very same, same things that we already know. But we want to, to, to leave on that day, November 27th, with concrete solutions in mind. You know, so here we are inviting the Small Business Development Center from the Ministry of Commerce. We're inviting... Um, the Center for Adolescent Renewal and, and Education. We're inviting even the Substance Abuse Advisory Council, so many different agencies that will address various aspects of the social ills that we're seeing in society. And the key messages on that day is to let men know these are your avenues for getting assistance. These are your avenues for um, at least making an application for job employment. These are your avenues for self-entrepreneurship. Okay, let's things. take a pause there. The avenues that the men have. We take a pause there. When we return, we'll continue this very, very interesting discussion. We talk a lot about the danger of climate change, but climate action is not always easy to achieve. A new era in climate action began on the 1st of January 2019. Implementation of the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol started then. Nations that agreed on the amendment will reduce the use of climate warming gases called HFCs in refrigerators and air conditioners by more than 80% over the next 30 years. This measure will help to avoid up to 0.4 degrees Celsius of global warming this century while continuing to protect the ozone layer. It contributes to reaching the global temperature target and it can work if it's fully supported and implemented. Preventing global warming is an extremely difficult task that will take a lot of time. The Kigali Amendment is one solution that's here already, right now. Each nation has the power to bring the world closer to the climate goal by ratifying the Kigali Amendment. This is our chance to take action. Thank you very much for staying with us. The, we are discussing the issues with men in our society, young men, older men, males in particular, and we're looking at the issues that affect our society and this generation. 
We have with us three gentlemen who are very able gentlemen discussing those issues in a very um, dignified and, and very <laughs> informed way, I must say. Before we took the break, we heard from Mr. Mr. Frederick telling us the things, specifically the things that, that must be done. But Do Nation Foundation, that's the agency or the NGO that the government is targeting to implement that initiative, uh, we, represented here by Mr. Modestus Lee, is going to tell us a little more about, well, he has a, 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 a quotation, a quote to read for us. Yes. So let's, let's yes. get Mr. Mr. This quote is actually from a gentleman. I think it's fair to say he, the name is well known. It's from a gentleman called Barack Obama, former president of the U.S. And at the time he made the speech, he was a candidate. This is just an excerpt from the speech. And he said, we know the statistics that children who grow up without a father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime. Nine times more likely to drop out of schools and 20 times more likely to end up in prison. They are more likely to have behavioral problems or run away from home or become adolescent parents themselves. Barack Obama, as a candidate for the U.S. presidency on the 15th of June, 2008, addressing a church gathering, made that speech. And I would invite anyone to read it. But what is telling is the influence of fathers in a home. And conversely, the negative influences when the fathers are absent. Because it's been recognized that fathers provide the structure for the homes. Structure or stability? Structure, stability, whichever way you want to put it. Mm. The absence of the fathers, and this is so prevalent, the absence of the fathers from the homes mean that you're lacking that structure and stability. And these are some of the results that you can talk about. You will see as a result crime, violence, school dropouts, mm -hmm. and we see that Oh, so much. Mm. It is for all these reasons again, and I will come back and say this, that Do Nation Foundation decided to go into that area and seek in our own small way to elevate that discussion. But how much success have you all um, been making? Okay. How do you measure success? Yeah. We started off with a panel discussion. Earlier on this year, we also had a gentleman, Coach Lyman, who actually came from the U.S., and this is one of the things he does. He looks to train fathers, and we did this with a number of young, well, to me, I mean, practically everybody's young. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. Yes. <laughs> but, and so we've been at it. We don't expect that we will hold an activity and then tomorrow we this see a magical change. This is a process, yes. But we have started the process, and we are very happy that the ministry, for example, mm -hmm. is coming on board. Mm -hmm. The National Youth Council, mm -hmm. they're coming on board. Yeah. So, recognizing all, the yes, effort. Yes, yeah. all we really did 
Yes. We're stopped. Stopped. Yes. stopped. Yes. And we're hoping, we're expecting that as we go along, mm -hmm. it will gather momentum. Mm -hmm. And while we may not see the changes at the end of this year, but there is the hope that this will create that momentum for change. And, and how, much does, how much support does the NYC give to that initiative? Right, so we're really glad that Diane and her team really you know, br brought forward the invitation to the NYC to collaborate because from our standpoint, we understand within our network, of course, we have 21 branches across the island district different sports yeah. councils. Um, so that's a starting point to which information can be disseminated to be filtered into the district. Mm -hmm. So we've supported along those lines. Um, we're continuing to support with the mentorship component of the Fathers Rise initiative where mm -hmm. I think they've trained a few mentors who would be you know, working within the communities mm -hmm. and identifying the young men who would be interested in the initiative and also providing that level of guidance. So we're continuing to identify members within our network who would be interested in that. Um, on the day, uh, we really want to perform that or, or, or support the initiative in terms of mobilizing young people to attend. Uh, because we understand, of course, it's, I think we're looking at the north of the island, so we want to ensure that our members across the island, particularly young people who are in rural communities, uh, can access the information and can yeah. attend and really benefit from the initiative. But moving forward, I mean, we really... Just, just a pause there. Will right. it be online? Um, there has been discussions to have some form of teleconferencing platform Zoom or, or WebEx or something where the diaspora can, can watch in, yeah, yeah, look in and see what is happening on the day. But we have not been able to really Confirm. finalize yeah. those, but it's something on the table. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. you know, moving forward as an organization, we do see the need for a consistent program targeted at mentorship of, of boys and, and young men young fathers uh, because that's so essential within our communities many young men do not have the opportunity to hear from someone who has been through the, op the experience and who, who knows how to deal with those challenges and just hearing from somebody else having the opportunity to tap into expertise you know whether it be within community or out of community that can be so valuable to the young man um, and also i think within the program we will be providing the opportunity for young men to provide some testimonials to the gathering to share of their own experiences and how they would have overcome the challenges as well. I can almost hear a young man saying, Gasa, them fellas, that is them system fellas, man. The fellas in the system, I, I, know, I ain't that. How do you reach these people? Right, well, I think as we would have mentioned earlier, you know? we, we do need to give some more thought to the program and, and how yeah, we can yeah, bring in those system, unconventional and, you know, and that's how they call it, the system. I'm not in the system. Yes, man. That, that, is, that is very true. And one of the things we all agree is that change is not necessarily instantaneous. In change management, you start off with a few. You get the early adopters. You work with them. And when others see something positive is happening, then they realize, okay, it may not be what I thought. Mm. You'll always get resistance to any form of change. Mm. That is a fact of life. But you cannot allow the fact Everyone that you have you. some resistance to keep you back. Derail you. Mm. No. You don't bemoan the masses who stay away. You celebrate the few who come. That way, you can make some headway. I recall um, a few years ago, I was part of it. Um, there was a, a thousand man match. I don't know if you, remember, you recall that. Uh, you, were you part of it? Actually, I was, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so how, and to me, we didn't read the kind of success or the objective that we were hoping we would have realized. It didn't happen. How different is that going to be, this, this initiative? And I want you to answer this, Mr. Mr. Frederick. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, as I mentioned earlier, this approach that we're taking this time is not just to simply 
re-examine the known issues. The focus is on solutions, meeting those men at the place where they need intervention. So they come saying, we need employment. Employment agencies will be there. Your NELP, NELU for skills development, mm -hmm. your um, Bell Fund, mm -hmm. so that you will assist those. Because we have some brilliant young men who have some initiatives oh, yes. for entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. but they just do not know where can they access the microfinancing. Mm -hmm. So there we have invited Bell Fund to set up a booth for exhibition. And, to, and right there, we register persons. Come in, on such and such date, we make an appointment. You can come in with your idea. So we want to have that kind of practical solution and to give the young men hope that here is something where we can, you know, we also want to invite Department of Labor, give the information. The United States Embassy has recently um, entered into an agreement for H1, H2 visas, skilled um, visas for persons to go to work in the United States. And most of the society does not know that. So the Department of Labor will be there. So it's not just the farm program as we know about it in Canada, but here is this new avenue opening. So that day is a day of information sharing, both from participants and your technical persons who are going to be on ground to give information as to what avenues are available. And that's what we believe is going to make a difference. As a game we'll be more, uh, yes, this is the game changer. What is the date again? November 27th. Sunday, November 27th. A fun day for the entire family, but not just fun, but a day of real serious discourse on the issues affecting men. And there will be music? There will be music. That was one of the um, little um, things that we want to have. We want to end with a bang. A unity concert where we're going to be inviting Desra Long, we're going to be inviting persons like Ashanti, Invader, mm. to have that culmination to the day. Mm. Another little um, um, thing that we're going to be having is your stand up comedians like Shaq, Dove Too Funny, mm. your Cokes, um, 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 Noah Seas. So we have some fun filled things, and there are some that we're going to leave it for the dates of when you come, you're going to. <laughs> you're going to I was enjoy. hoping you'd tell me a journey and modest as would say. <laughs> 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 You don't want everybody to <laughs> run away. <laughs> 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 but perhaps that's the attraction. <laughs> anyway, guys, we do not have much time left. Um, I'll probably ask you to just just give us a closing, you know, statement, so a quick word, quick, very quickly. What yeah, would so you say to our audience? Yeah, so it's all about opportunities. Uh, I think in every little way that we can, uh, as individuals, as a collective group, find ways to expand or increase opportunities for young people, for young men. There's always a chance. Uh, keep pushing forward, keep striving. Um, and as young people, as individuals in spaces, we will keep listening and finding ways to provide support where necessary. What is this? We want to see fathers rise. We want the fathers to return to the homes. We need the structures. We need the stability for the younger generation coming up. We understand that many of the current fathers grew up without that structure. And so we are looking for, at ways and means of being able to provide that training. But we want fathers to stand and help build a better St. Lucia. That is what we're looking for. Two seconds, please. Well, I would just like to reiterate, plus, um, men in the community, please come out to that one-day event, the National Men's Convocation, and also look out for the mini community assessments where our social transformation officers will be out hearing from them the issues that they face. Well, there you have it, St. Lucia, the issues brought right to, uh, before you, um, and I do hope that you'll make the effort to turn out on the 27th, 27th of November. November at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground. So, 
we look forward to your presence. I'll be there, and I'll be looking out for you. Thank you so much for staying with us and for viewing. And that's it for Issues and Answers.